The garden's set amongst the famous Barbican architecture. It's basically all concrete. Wonderful concrete, in my opinion. And we love the contrast between the green of the garden and the greyness of the towers. The main idea for the garden is habitats for wildlife and a place for residents to sit and ponder about life in the middle of the urban jungle. After the war, this was simply all rubble, old cellars and the remains of mainly commercial buildings. Then the Barbican Estate was built and after that the city decided sometime in the 1990s that it would transform this into a wildlife garden. It wasn't really looked after in the way that we thought it could be looked after, so a team of residents decided to really make a habitat for wildlife. Right now the garden is waking up from its very cold spring. You can see numerous plants in the meadow, in the pollinator bed, in the woodlands. They can be natives, they can be non-natives. As long as the insects like them and the birds like the seeds, we really don't mind. It's a home for probably at least 200 invertebrates, bumblebees, butterflies, all sorts of insects. If you look down here into one of our two ponds, you'll see tiny tadpoles, which are the results of frogs spawning here back in February. And there were at least 78 in this pond. Over here on this side is the area where all the bird feeders are and also log piles with tree trunks that have been cut down at various times. This is an area which is very important obviously for birds but also for insects and invertebrates of all kinds. And over here is the bird hide where we record all the different species and we send our observations to Green Space Information for Greater London. It's amazing really that less than 50 years ago this area was just rubble and bombed out shelters but now just look at it. It's a way of getting a little bit of greenness in your soul which I think is so important to us all because we realise that as much as we like cityscape, we also like a little bit of countryside.